Hello everybody, Andy here, and today I want to talk to you about hobby because you know me, you know this channel, I'm 100% hobby 100% of the time. Although, uh, that's obviously a joke, I don't like painting at all. I like hobby, I don't like painting. I would argue I'm the number one painter for people that don't like painting. And that means that when I paint, I try to do things as fast as possible, but also as easily as possible. I will 100% do something that takes me longer if it is easier to do. However, if I can combine the two and do the easiest, fastest thing while still getting a good look on the tabletop, I will take that option 100% of the time. This means that if I had to have a hobby-based YouTube channel, I would call myself Rattle Can Hobbies because I believe that if I could do as much as possible with a rattle can, I will do that. For example, I wasn't thinking of showing this, but um, when I began painting my sector uh, Imperialis, f first thing I did, how do you, you know, I don't have uh, that homemade black wash, which I should definitely make. So, step one, three different spray cans, because that's quick and it's easy and it gives an immediate effect. I'm all about effect for minimum possible effort, uh, which honestly just kind of represents my life in general. Uh, hashtag Millennials. Anyway, uh, let's dive into it. I want to review the new Color Forge spray paints because uh, they're hot, they're fresh, and they're ready. Uh, and then I also want to talk about Army Painter Dip, the quick shade. For those of you that have been around for only, let's say, since ninth or even eighth edition, the last five, six years maybe, you might have never heard of Army Painter Quick Shade. And I, being an old ancient man, uh, person, chap, chapess, chap I, have known about this for ages, but never actually used it before. So I wanted to do a fresh kind of review, especially with my painting style. And then we will get to these, because these are interesting. Um, well, actually we're doing them first, I think. So for those of you that don't know, Color Forge, they come in 500 ml bottles, uh, cans, and they are, 12 pounds, or if you buy from Element Games, oh, which I have an affiliate link for, by the way, it's 10% off, so it's 10 pounds 80. Cool, not bad. That is the cheapest a spray can comes. So you've got to, we're about to talk about the quality and the effect, but you've also got to think that actually they are the cheapest. However, minor note, I cannot buy Colorforge in any hobby store near me. The only ones I have near me are GW sprays, and uh, army painter sprays. So, do I want to then spend the extra shipping to buy a single can? No. Do I want to spend the extra shipping to buy 20 cans? Yeah, probably, because it's still only like four pounds extra. So, works itself out. Cool. Right, before we dive into it, I'm actually just gonna tell you, because we've been talking for three minutes, so I'm actually just gonna give you the answer. Colorful sprays, I really like them. They have a really good spray action. They have great coverage. Nice. They also have a really nice matte finish, which is important because although I really enjoy the Army Paint Spray Paints, and I will tell you why these are better in a moment, um, they're only 400 mils, they're more expensive, and they are not matte. Some of them are, some of them shiny. For example, if I go back to this, um, up top I used some sort of, uh, you know, like what, white bone, bleached bone, something like that. Lovely matte finish. In the middle, I used, I think, like bootstrap leather. Lovely um, matte finish. On the bottom, I used one of the darker browns. Gloss. What? Uh, it's not full gloss, it's a, a satin. Likewise, I did a similar thing for my Gellapox, uh, where I was doing this weird demony thing, and they were sprayed black or white, I can't remember. And then from the bottom, I gave them like an upglow of the green color that I wanted them to be. It was gloss. Well, satin, sorry, it had a slight sheen to it. It wasn't full on like gloss, but it was like, oh, that's that's not the effect I wanted at all. And now it looks really weird. I do not like that shine from that. I, I like a nice matte color. So Army Painter, a little bit inconsistent. Let's also talk about the other thing that Color Forge kind of puts itself out there for. We are going to get to pictures in a moment. Sorry, this is just me summarizing very quickly <laughs> before we get to that. Um, Color matching. So the big kind of thing about Color Forge is yes, they will. Um, they're cheap. 
they have a really good spray coverage, etc. And their other selling point is that they have perfect matches to Games Workshop paints. So Sunset Yellow, Sunset Yellow is their version of Avalon Sunset and Republic Blue is whatever, I assume Ultra. One of the blues, I don't, don't know. That wasn't why I bought them. Um, <clears throat> this was just, yeah, that, that wasn't the intent. I'll show you what I got them for and why I tried to do a, a weird thing and how it played in with the Army Painted Dip in a moment as we get an overview of a hobby project uh, and where, and the pitfalls. So for that, these are good. Yeah, nice. Uh, however, I will say, they also do a, a white and a black, and they're good. And if you have these at your local store and that's your cheapest option, I would happily use any color forge spray. Total thumbs up, all good, even the black and the white. I have not yet tested, tested their matte, uh, sorry, their varnish spray or their metallics. I assume they're going to be fine. Although the varnish spray, you never quite know. I would have to actually test them. However, I'm just gonna say it. Um, Halfords, that's a like car repair place in the UK is everywhere. Uh, and their, their matte black, their primer white, spot on. These are great sprays. I will always use these. They are, however, 500 mil, same as these, and 12 pounds. If you have Colorforge next to you and you don't have that Element Games discount, they're the same price. There is, these are just as good as these. So there you go, cool. Anything else? Um, no, I think we're ready to go into the hobby project. So, <clears throat> for the hobby project, I began. Hey, but first, I would like to give you a subscriber only benefit. And that subscriber only benefit is a big double hello. Wow, isn't that so wholesome? Seven minutes in, and I've already given you the review, and now we get to the double hello, and we actually get into digging in to how they actually occurred in my hobby project and the effect they had. Um, honestly, uh, thank you so much for watching. Uh, let's dive in, let's keep going, let's not dwell. Uh, I do have like a Patreon and thing if you like what I'm doing here. Hashtag Rattlecan Hobbies, hashtag Polite Gang Rise Up, let's go. Okay, so I began a new hobby project, you know, with the death of 40K because it's a terrible game. Um, I've started looking around for other things to play, and one of those other things I wanted to play was uh, War Machine, a game from Privative Press. Uh, and so I picked up two or well, four uh, battle boxes from them, and I, you know, it, it's a larger size game. It's not than Kill Team, it's not a full 40K, you know, 100 models on the board or whatever, it's 30 models on the board, you know, depending on how you build it. But that's still quite a few models, and I was like, okay, I want to smash this out quick as I can. Um, let's, let's not do my normal style. My normal style is contrast. I do a zenithal, I spray everything black. I give it all a zenithal white highlight and I just apply my colors. And I really like that. It works very well for me. I'm very used to it. However, I thought with this, let's try and get the base kind of core color for the armies down first. So I wanted one of the factions that I got to be, uh, to be yellow. And I wanted the other one to be blue. I don't have that one there. Um, so that's why I used the blue and the yellow sprays. And instead of just using the ones that I know, the demonic yellow and the crystal blue from Army Painter, I thought, let's do Color Forge. Let's see how they work. Let's get into it. Um, so again, I do want to reiter reiterate, Color Forge is good, good spray, Good action, good coverage, 100%. I would argue better than, um, than Army Painter. One of the issues Army Painter has sometimes is that it will, it goes on pretty thick if you're not really careful. Um, and it's easier to apply Army Painter bad than it is to apply Color Forge bad. But if you know what you're doing, they're both equally good, but uh, for a beginner, rattle can master, uh, it might be easier to use a Color Forge. Cool, let's keep going. So. Uh, first thing I did was I sprayed my models. Uh, on the right there, we see just a standard Halfords matte black. On the left, we see what you might mistake for being just kind of a different finish on it, um, a different level of glossiness to the coat, but no. 
On the left, I actually sprayed all of them. Instead of the Colorforge matte black, I sprayed them the uh, Raven black. Now, I had bought Raven black on the assumption it was the only black they did. I was wrong. They do do matte black, which I'm sure would be the same and just as good as the Halfords. Uh, to, but Raven black is actually quite a nice color. It, it's, you know, a dark gray. Um, but I, I did not expect this out of the can. Anyway, we keep going. Uh, this is just another showing on the left. We have that gray on the right. We have that black. Cool. We then take a slightly different look. We look at the Avalon Sun, sorry, it's not, what's it called? Sunset Yellow? Yes. We see the Colorforge Sunset Yellow on the right versus the Demonic Yellow uh, from Army Painter on the left. Now, I, I can't hide this. I love that demonic yellow on the left. However, the sunset yellow on the right to me is quite a muted color and it's very dull, almost orangey. Not Colorforge's fault. Colorforge is matching it to Avalon Sunset. So what I'm saying is I do not like Avalon Sunset as a base yellow. Why is that? Fair question. That's because I personally like really bright bold, vibrant colors on the tabletop, on my models, and because of the way I tend to paint, after you've applied your base coat, you only get less vibrant. The first thing you're going to do is put a wash over it, so you're immediately dulling the whole thing down. So if what you have is a slightly orange base coat, but you want it to be yellow, it's just going to become muddy brown. Uh, this here was just uh, me attempting to show you uh, that there is a a bit of a, a zenithal from all, all, all of these. Doesn't make a difference, nobody's gonna see it, so who cares? Uh, we keep going. This is how it turned out looking. This is the whole army, uh, all sprayed in uh, sunset yellow. Uh, and then we just get another angle. Now we get another angle, oh, no, okay. And then this this was um, the Signar. First was the Kador from War Machine. This is the Signar from War Machine. So, um, oh sorry, actually, let me go back to these. So we see here, if you look on the right, we see the one model that is sprayed in yellow standing out quite a lot compared to everything else. Uh, I do fix that later, but I've got to be honest, if I was to redo this, I would prefer for everything to be the demonic yellow. All right. Uh, right, we then have uh, the Signar. Now, all of these I sprayed in the blue, Zenithal just like the others, but two of them, were actually, as you can see there, were my test models. Uh, we see one on the left and one on the right. I was going to do them just a standard contrast. So what I did there was I gave them the white zenithal and I was going to go ahead and just paint them talisar blue and block in the metallics. Uh, I will still do that on those two, but um, yeah, that's why they stand out differently. But after I sprayed those, I thought, oh man, this is so much talisar blue. I'm just gonna spray the whole army blue. Right, uh, then we get some close-ups of the models. Good stuff, lovely. Oh, look at that, both armies together. Um, this is the starter box and the expansion box uh, for both the Signar and the Kador, very cool. Um, let's keep going. Right, now we get some close-ups. Right, we're onto the army painter dip now. That's it, that's the Color Forge out of the way. We're done at 13 minutes and 40 seconds. We're now going to talk about army painter dip. And I'm going to leave it on this uh, interesting photo for a while. I wanted to make, uh, okay, so I had these two armies, right? Uh, where are they? Here they are. So what have we got? We've got, a, I don't know, 35, maybe 40 models on the left, same on the right. That's a lot of models. I don't like painting. So I'm thinking, how can I get these done as fast as possible? Right. Give them a colour spray across the whole of the army, give them a dip, and then paint them. Okay? That makes sense to me. The army painter dip was supposed to just be a way of getting a, 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 a dip that I could, or a wash that I could apply without having to focus too much on actually applying everything by a brush. It was meant to be faster, I would, you know, in what? 10, 15, 20 minutes, dip the whole two armies and call it a day, let them dry for however long they need it. <clears throat> for those of you that have looked into Army Painted Dip before, 
you will probably be expecting that, hey, hold off. It doesn't look good, okay? It takes a while for the dip to work its magic. And so this is how they looked after, I think it was 24 hours, maybe 36, maybe even 48. But basically at this point, they are touch dry and can be painted on. <clears throat> now, what do we see? Obviously, I can only tell you from my eyes, the yellow on the left, actually, not terrible, workable. I'd still prefer if it was a brighter yellow, but it's, it's the Avil and Sunset style orangey yellow, so it's not standing out as much as it can. On the right, we have the blue. Ooh, that looks terrible, doesn't it? <laughs> yes, and let me tell you for this, chaps, that's going to get worse, much worse, as I find out how contrasts react over varnish. Let's keep going. Oh, uh, so that's stretched in a weird way, but ignore that. So, we then see on the right, what I did was I just gave it a very quick dry brush of um, Cygnus Yellow, just to give it some sort of aspect to it, and then just blacked the gun, and then I did white on the pouches and the wood on the gun, just hit, Cool, easy. Uh, and then we, I'm not gonna stay on this picture for too long because you can't tell how bad it is because it's weirdly stretched. But the thing on the yellow, I then did the same. So this had been my intent. I was going to apply the varnish so that the armor, the, the main color of the model is completely finished and I wouldn't have to do anything else. I would then dry brush it, done. Armor's complete, main color's complete, I will then paint in white every thing that I want highlighted that uh, or a different color apart from metallics will be which will be black and I will then still use contrast paint because I'm lazy and I don't want to paint things normally cool right <clears throat> moving along uh, I, I don't here we just have different stages in the middle we have the guy that's um, finished if you want to put it that way on the right we have one that is just just the blue, hasn't been dipped. On the left, we have one that has been dipped. No, he hasn't, sorry. He wasn't dipped because I realized that dipping sucks. So the one on the left is just sprayed and then dry brushed with a blue, okay? So this is me starting to realize, oh, maybe I don't need to dip them at all or apply any sort of wash. Uh, I then run with that because at this point I've realized the dip method won't work. I don't know if my pictures go back and show that, but if not, I will go back myself and uh, point it out to you. On the left here, we have the, so they were all sprayed blue with the zenithal, and then I've treated them in different ways. On the left, we have the, uh, the blue spray and then a blue wash applied to it. This was Tyron blue, so it's still a wash, not a contrast, and it's just kind of blew the whole thing up, which I actually, quite like. Arguably, I should have tried it with Drakenhof Nightshade as that might have um, provided slightly better depth on the shadows, but it is what it is. In the middle, uh, we have Agrax Earthshade and then dry brushed. I think Calgar Blue is the one I've got lying around that I'm dry brushing everything in. And then on the right, we just have, that's how it looks with a, a wash of Agrax Earthshade. This is me trying to figure out how to fix the nightmare of I can no longer paint the army in the way that I like to paint, AKA all contrast. Uh, so I have to figure something out. So what do I do? Um, I actually quite like that blue looking at it now, but I didn't go with that. In the end, I decided everything would get an Agrax Earthshade wash. And then because I think the model on the right is a little bit too dark, really too muddy. Um, I'm going to dry brush it all up with the Calgar blue. Uh, and this is just another picture of that. What, what, what do we actually have here? So, oh, okay, so on the left, <clears throat> what I've done is I applied the blue spray to the model, I then dry brushed the model, and then I applied Agrax Earthshade. So that's doing a dry brush, then a wash. On the right, what we have is the opposite. So sprayed, washed, then dry brushed. As you can see, they end up looking wildly different, whether you do the dry brush first or the wash first. Now on the left, the benefit there is that, you know, the, the strokes of the dry brush are kind of muted and like all pulled down a bit, so it looks a bit smoother. 
but on the right, you can actually see the fucking model. So I'll probably go with that one. Okay, I think, yes, okay, so that's kind of, um, uh, yeah, I, okay, so the next few images are just me proving like, I don't like how the Kador and the Signal have turned out. I do not like having to change the way that I paint things, especially when they've kind of messed up because I thought I could do a thing and it turns out that thing didn't work. So here is just proof that this isn't the sculpt's fault, um, because you know, maybe somebody thinks, oh, why isn't he showing me Warhammer models? Maybe it's these models. Uh, whether you like the aesthetic or not, the models are totally fine, at least I feel, uh, because here is me painting in a normal, my normal contrast, all contrast, plus you know, a little bit of silver here and there, um, to show that, yep, yeah, they turn out just fine. Um, this, is a, a, this is the Chimera Shadow Flame Shard faction, hence the slightly different aesthetic. But yep, they turn out totally fine. Uh, this is again another one who, despite having all blue armor, relatively similar-ish in a sense to the uh, Signal, the other blue, this was still done with all contrast paints. And I don't know about you, but I feel it just stands out and looks significantly better. Obviously, I've also finished this, whereas I haven't finished the, the Signal, but that's because I feel like I messed up the Signal, and so I'm now very demotivated to finish them. Uh, however, here we go, finally. So this is, in the center, we have me painting my normal style, contrast everywhere, all good. Um, this is a, a, it's called a Warlock, it's a character model. Um, all three of these are, actually. Uh, but as you can see, the middle guy just kind of I don't know, he just pops significantly more. On the left, we have the Signar model. This blue from Colorforge, then given an Agrax Earth shade and then a dry brush, it just doesn't work for me. Um, I think that very genuinely, if I had used the Army Painter Crystal Blue, it's such a brighter blue, it would have, it would have looked much better. <clears throat> but again, that's not what Colorforge is trying to do. Army Painter has gone with really bright, vibrant, vivid colors, whereas, uh, Colorforge is just trying to copy GW's shades and hues and luminosities and RBGs and RPGs and RNGs and all that good stuff. Whereas we then see on the right, now this is um, the Kador Warcaster dude. He is better, in my opinion, than, than the Signar, the blue on the left, just because Obviously I've put a brown wash over yellow instead of a brown wash over blue, and so you can see his details significantly better. They've also both been uh, dry brushed up with their respective yellow and blue. Um, but yes, there you go. I just wanted to prove this isn't the sculpt's fault. This isn't Color Forge's fault, uh, despite them, you know, this is just how the project ended up. Um, and you know what, I think that ultimately, for the blue, I'm just going to apply some really vivid um, golds and that's going to give you the spot colours that you need to save them so at least they will have visual interest on the model uh, whereas I think for the yellow on the right I'm just going to apply some very dark greys and blacks uh, plus mixing in leathers uh, and browns and they're going to work out just fine however I believe no matter what I do I am not ever going to be able to make them look as good as that middle model. Uh, and that's because for me, I define good, a good paint job as how does it look on camera? And so that's why I'm always looking to make something the most vibrant possible. I understand that's a me thing, but um, what can I say? It's just how I, how I be because I, I want things to stand out on camera above anything else. I'm not really into the close-up photography thing. I don't really care if something looks good on Instagram. I want to do a top-down shot and you can see every model. And that's really something that appeals to me the most. Um, <clears throat> there you go. Cool. Woo. So, to summarize, Colorforge good. The colors, however, for me, are very muted if I want to work them into my other projects. For that, I would stick with Army Painter. However, Good price, good size, good spray, all good. Army Painter Dip. If you're, a if you're a lazy contrast painter like me, 
don't use this. Um, this did not do what I expected at all. I don't think it's good. I feel like this is old technology. If, if, dumb as that sounds. Um, the way it works is, is you dip your model or you brush it on, whatever. <clears throat> and because it's a varnish, it will spread through, it will fill in all the cracks, but then dry over the top of the surface quite smooth. That's how, why you get the shiny gloss to it. But then that means that you've hidden all of the cracks beneath the model. Now, if you've painted it with nice, vibrant, solid paints, then yeah, okay, it gives you like, you know, an, an overall brownness to it fine but um pro <clears throat> i the only benefit to it is if you don't want to ma varnish your model and so you want to do an agrax earth shade and a varnish in a single solution in which case army paint a quick shade this doesn't work with contrast everything just turns up looking terrible um and you cannot paint over the top of this effectively because again what it does is it seeps into the cracks and then fills them out with its uh, you know, surface tension and so although if this is the final thing you do you can still see where it's gone into the cracks and it will highlight for you if you then try to paint over it the surface of it has gone completely flat so you lose all definition on your model for any further color don't do that. Cool, okay, well, um, that's it. That's my color forging, that's my army painter dip, and if you made it to the end of the video, I'd like to give you a big triple hello. Uh, look, I know that hobby videos are not my, not my thing. Um, I just wanted to do this as a slightly different thing. I think that I, because I spray paint so much, I, I think that I actually have sort of a valid view on, on the Color Forge. Um, and then just because they were used alongside as an addition to Army Painter kind of a dip, and the fact that I haven't seen an Army Painter dip review in the last like three years, five years, I thought, all right, I'll talk about that quickly. But really, hopefully you just enjoyed the narrative learning experience of my, my hobby project. Uh, yeah, there you go. Uh, hey, if you made it to the end of the video, thank you. Um, stay hydrated. You really like what I do here. I have a Patreon where uh, currently they are being bombarded by extra unboxings as I buy more War Machine. Uh, it's basically just me having a rant about War Machine uh, for 20 minutes as I slowly unbox one of the items. Uh, that's pretty much all my Patreon is at the moment. But it will be more stuff at some point. All right. Have fun, everybody. Bye.